When you think about the United States, which cities, states, or regions come first to mind? Is it California, with its unique culture, perfect weather, and world-renowned institutions like Hollywood and Silicon Valley? Or is it the massively sized state of Texas, with its red-hot economy, strong individualism, and proximity to Mexico? Maybe it's the Big Apple or even Chicago, two of America's biggest cities with its tallest skylines and biggest financial markets. For much of the world, America's most visited, populated, and economically important regions have become almost synonymous with what the United States is. And the U.S. South isn't that. No, it's a part of the nation that's become almost forgotten, if not for the age-old myth of Southern elegance, charm, and hospitality. I am a third-generation farmer. My family farmed in soybean and cotton. They ain't got to live tough, and so I had to get a second job. But is it, is it enough? No. Despite my lifelong fascination with maps, researching this video on why the South is broken reminded me of their greatest flaw. Maps can show us so much about how places are connected, their resources, and even much of their history. But maps lack context, as showing isn't always telling, and geographically similar areas can be worlds apart. If you look at a map of the southern United States, you can see that states like Florida and Texas seemingly fit in perfectly. And yet, when you look at the context and consider their history, you will see that these states have as much in common with places like New Mexico and California as they do Mississippi. That's why it's so difficult to define exactly what the South really even is. Vox lists all of these states, including Texas, Virginia, and Florida, as the South. While a 538 survey has respondents including places as far west as Colorado and Arizona, and Wikipedia stretches the South all the way up to Delaware and Maryland. However, the consensus, but definitely not the census, seems to describe the South as being made up of Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Georgia. Traditionally speaking, the Deep South. Not including places like Florida and Texas, or even Kentucky or Virginia. That's because the South, according to most Americans, is this place that's as much about a period in time as it is a physical landmass. That's why you hear about the Old South and the New South, which cover roughly the same geographic area, but can be a world apart due to the progress that's happened there over the past century or so. At least that's the narrative that many Southerns would have you believe. And perhaps it's true to some extent, but the difference between the inevitability of change and the acceptance of change have always been a real problem in the American South. Now, the southern United States was already inhabited by the Mississippian people long before European settlers showed up there in the 15th century. Spain, France, and England were the first international countries to claim and settle the area we now know of as the southern United States leaving a heavy influence on the region that can still be seen today, as with the French culture seen all over Louisiana, and especially New Orleans. The southern region of the United States has, in many ways, been at the forefront of America's contentious history. From the snow campaign of the Revolutionary War in South Carolina back in 1775, to serving as the southern theater of the War of 1812, to being the epicenter of the Civil War, and that's to say nothing of slavery, the Jim Crow era, or the Civil Rights Movement, all of which deeply stained the entire region while highlighting the inherent flaws of a nation that was supposed to be built on freedom and justice. The first and second Great Migration saw a total of more than 11 million African Americans fleeing to the northern portions of the United States due to the harsh, unfair, and often violent conditions they faced in the southern core. But what comes to mind when you think about the modern South? Probably the region's nature, agriculture, and unique culinary style, or its isolation and traditional values. Either way, I'm confident it isn't urban sprawl, economic opportunity, or city building, and we should really look at why that is. But first, I should mention that the South actually overlaps the fastest growing American region. See, the Sun Belt region includes at least part of every southern state. And while the sizable Sun Belt region stretches across the major cities of at least 15 different U.S. states, all the way from Los Angeles, California, to Charleston, South Carolina, it's also the most economically potent region of the United States and the primary relocation target of American workers, families, and retirees. Then again, the South being located within the Sun Belt is more about the massive size of that region than an indicator of potential growth or success in the southern United States. And the South has struggled significantly for more than a century now, with lagging economics, major pollution, problematic health outcomes, and limited development. 
that's partially because the South lacks in urban development and the kind of infrastructure that goes along with urban growth. With the biggest cities across the entire region being Atlanta, Nashville, Charlotte, New Orleans, Memphis, and Raleigh, none of which has a city proper population of even a million residents. Atlanta, Nashville, and Charlotte do at least have thriving economies and growing populations. Well, it's a little more than just that. If the South were just those three cities and their corresponding metropolitan areas, then the South would be one of the fastest growing and most economically successful portions of America, with endless development and the ability to draw some of the nation's most prominent corporations. But then, that would make the South an entirely different place anyway. Because most of the South is made up of very small communities, living on few, often low-paying, manufacturing businesses, with a cost of living that only remains so low because upward mobility remains nearly impossible. I'm sure you have passed through some places like that on your way to other places, or perhaps just to get some fuel or grab a Big Mac. But whether it be Corinth, Mississippi, Jackson, Tennessee, or countless other southern cities suffering through real poverty and decay, much of the South exists on the memories of what it thought it once was, while completely lacking tangible success or the promise of a better tomorrow for the millions of residents spread across thousands of small towns in a part of America that's often overshadowed by big cities and resort towns. That isn't an insult to the many good people living in the outlying portions of the South, many of which are more than content with the freedom of isolation, a culture of riding around on back roads, or just sitting around the bonfire with family and friends. No, it's just the harsh economic reality of a part of America where livability is poor and regular folks have to work twice as hard just to get by. When you look at the states that make up the southern United States, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Georgia, their combined 2022 GDP, or gross domestic product, was 40% less than just the single state of California. What's more, the total population of those southern states is in excess of 50 million residents, nearly 30% higher than California's 38.94 million residents. And that's, at least in part, because the principal industries there are agriculture, oil and gas, construction, and manufacturing. And it isn't that those industries are completely void of any good-paying, middle-class jobs, it's more about the overall lack of modern employment sectors there altogether. The Northeast is an important financial and business services core, with Wall Street, DC, and every Ivy League university, while Western states serve as the epicenter for silicon and venture capital funding. And Texas, Florida, Colorado, and Utah have all become a primary target for major modern businesses looking to diversify or relocate. Even the Midwestern region has taken real advantage of its own shortcomings in recent years, utilizing its strong infrastructure and central location to bring in billions of dollars in logistics and warehousing investments. But the South remains stuck in this perpetual limbo, as the biggest cities there continue growing while rural areas continue to erode away.